Hey, it's Andrew on Software. Today I would like to share some thoughts about Heroku pipelines. Uh, it's something that I was doing uh, for the last two days. Uh, it's, uh, I'm creating a new configuration of Heroku nodes for one of our applications, which has several microservices. So pipelines and microservices, how it works together. I've had some like questions, which I wasn't sure what is the answer, but overall the Heroku pipelines is a super simple concept. Basically it's creating a new node per each of your application. And if we are using microservices, it means a new node per each of the microservices. And the only actually connection between them is that in you can define the flow, like you have the staging and production, probably the simplest flow you can imagine. And you, you can just say on the staging server, you can just say promote to production. And what it does, it just copies all the content from this node and uh, uses it for the new machine. And it's super fast, that's nice. Um, and it's, that's basically it. But it's important to understand that now you have a doubled number of nodes include, so this has impacts on pricing too. Mm, so this is like two nodes now per each of your like application. Uh, it means that you also have different set on, of environment variables. You need to set them up, set them up uh, like separately. Uh, you have a different set of add-ons. So if you're relying on some Heroku add-ons, you need to add them on again in this uh, in this other place. Uh, by default, Heroku handles the databases the way that this is basically an add-on. So you're using Postgres as an add-on. And with the new node, you can reuse the existing URL if you want. Uh, so you will have the same database for staging and production, but it's probably not the best idea usually. So uh, you probably just want to install the new add-on on Postgres and let it point to a new uh, Postgres URL. So database URL, in, in the case of Rails application, this is like automatically detected and it works out of the box usually. So this is a way of dealing with the flow from staging to production immediately. You can just promote it. You don't have to use branches here. Uh, I think that's like the default, uh, but which also means that if you want to stay with some code base on your staging for a longer time and some stable version on the production, uh, and then you like gather some new things on the staging and then you want to deliver a hotfix to production Then without branches is actually more difficult and I'm not quite sure like what's the best way of handling it with pipelines Maybe we just uh, maybe just promoting wouldn't be enough in that case uh, They also do this thing with uh, support for pull requests I'm not a fan of neither either branches or pull requests I'm trying to avoid them as much as I can in my projects uh, but they do support it in a way that for pull requests with pipelines, you can have a temporary application created for that pull request so that you can test it and make it like the pull request merge. So probably it's promoted to staging and then you can click or call a command line to promote it to production. And yeah, you can make the promotion from one place to another using the UI and you can do it from the command line. So that's uh, quite nice. I think that's all uh, what is important here. So overall, I'm, if you have, to, you know, there was an episode where I said that feature toggles are much better than stagings, but in some cases, in some environment, uh, it might be more accepted to have this clear distinction between staging and production. So if you just have to follow this path, then pipelines, Heroku pipelines uh, might be a way to go. And it's also nice, there is this guy on Twitter, uh, I think, don't remember the, the Twitter nickname right now, but it was nice to be able to have an answer for questions very quickly on Twitter about Heroku pipelines. So this way of supporting is pretty cool. Thanks for that. And thanks for listening.